Dear students, welcome to the fourth web session on design thinking. I hope you could able to spend some time uh, understanding or mapping some of your concepts to the scenario or activity which we described in the previous session. In this session, we are going to deep down into the theoretical foundation of design thinking and its connection with the design as well as innovation. The fundamental and the simple question which we all have is, what is design thinking? As you can see in the slide, the best journey between the problem and solution is called design thinking. It's as simple as that. How do you define this best? What is this journey is all about? Let me share an example. Suppose you want to travel to Uti. Without much planning on the day of travel, you just boarded into a bus or a train which is going towards OT and in between during the multiple halves you actually switched over to multiple buses, trains, trucks and so on. Finally somehow you managed to reach OT. That is an experience you had for this particular journey. Let's take uh, another option you have. You started walking towards OT and you took lot of pain to reach OT after a couple of months and finally you manage to reach OT. Let us take the third option you have. You first started googling where exactly OT is located and who are the travel agencies giving you best packages and you started discussing multiple options with your family members. You started nailing down the best options you are, which are available. You book tickets through some agency. Finally you reach to the OT with a great pleasure with a great experience. Which you consider is the best option among these three? Obviously without thinking much, the third one is the best option. Option three is considered to be the best journey between the desire to the solution. Though it is a crude example which we just discussed, let us go a little deeper into the design thinking terminology and what are the qualifiers for the best which we are discussing just now. All three options are serving the purpose. However, you all agree with me that the third option gives you the best experience. Third option goes with the human-centered approach. Third option goes with the high consensus among the team members. And the third option also goes with the best planning. That is how it actually qualifies for the best. Now let us paint this best with the design thinking terminology. You can just see in the slide Design thinking is a creative problem solving approach. Underline creative problem solving approach. Design thinking is a systematic collaborative approach for identifying and creatively solving the problems. This is what I think we discussed in the previous session as well. Design thinking is a human centered approach to an innovation that draws from the designer's toolkit to integrates the needs of the people the possibility of the technology and the requirements for the business success. Look at the important aspects of the design thinking. Fundamentally, it is a human centered approach. It also needs to be qualified on the needs of the people, the possibility of the technology and the third one is it should have a business success or a social success. The next important element as you see in the slide, design thinking solves the problem through an iteration but not through a big bang approach, which we discussed in the se web session too. Now let us see some more aspects of the best. Problem or opportunity is not well defined. We already discussed in the general principles of the second uh, web session. A breakthrough idea or a concept needed, which we discussed. There should be a big impact. Either it could be a significant revenue or a big social impact, or you need to get into a new market, which we already discussed in this web session too. Let us, let us visualize the what exactly is the best. There should be a fuzzy front end and within that you would actually go through a lot of iterations and you get some clarity. From there you stabilize your thinking or an idea or some kind of a process. 
After that, you actually go into a stage gate approach. That is when I think some phases would be actually come into picture before you lead it to some kind of final solution. This is what is all best is about. So we already discussed, so now we understand that what exactly is the design thinking is all about. Let us go for the other aspects of design thinking. If someone has to implement the design thinking, that someone should also have some qualifications. Let us now look at what are the qualifications required for the design thinker. What exactly is the design mindset? Let us look at some of the aspects. Design thinking draws logic, intuition, imagination and systematic reasoning to explore multiple options or multiple opportunities. Right. So there, there is a connection with the logic, intuition, imagination and systematic reasoning. So all aspects has to be implied. All aspects has to be applied at some other point of design thinking process. So the design thinking mindset is not a problem focused, but more of a solution focus. That is the fundamental segregation you need to look at. That is a fundamental breakup we need to see. They won't focus on the problem. They focus more on the solution side. They also keep some other aspects in mind. They try to minimize the risk. They improve the speed. They are more of action oriented. They try to reduce the cost. They energize the employees. They inspire the employees. They motivate the employees. They do a lot of combo effort on analysis and imagination. So it is not just analytical mind. It is not just imaginative mind, creative mind. It's the combined effort is what I think they actually applied. So design thinking is the combined effort of a critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity to improve the quality of a life. This is what exactly is the designer's mindset. This is what is exactly the design thinker's mindset. Let, now let us look at a very fundamental question. All of us would get this basic clarification. What exactly is the difference between design and design thinking? Are they both same? Because there is a design in commonality, are they both same? Or there is some kind of segregation between two. Let's look at this aspect of it. Design means how it looks like and how you feel like. Probably I think you understand the terminology of it. Design means how it looks like and how it feels like. Whereas, whereas a design thinking means how it works. Right. So it's more of a solution oriented. It is not on the peripheral oriented. The pictures which are describing these two are also giving us some kind of a differentiation. Probably I think you can make a distinction of both of these aspects. So design thinking uses the designers of sensibility and methods. You now see that design thinking uses the designers of sensibility or methods. You now look at the very important aspect of it. Designers of sensibility and methods means there is a designer inside and his or her sensibility and methods are to be really employed now and then they actually go to the market or to the society and match the people needs and they see that some kind of technical feasibility is available in that or not and see there is a business viability or not and they see if they can actually derive some customer value or not and see if there is a market opportunity for the derived solution or not. So they make a very good connection between all these aspects. These are a string of pearls. I think all are to be connected, then it is called as a design thinking. There is a clear demarcation between design, designer, design thinking and innovation. Probably I think you need to see that subtle difference between all these aspects. Now let us look at the most important question. And the most confusing uh, question is, what exactly is the relationship between design thinking and innovation? Most of the times we loosely use these words and we interchange these words and uh, we make a lot of mistakes in understanding these two important aspects. What exactly is the relationship and connection between these two aspects you need to very clearly uh, focus on? I will take a very crude example. We all like rasgullas. I'm sure you would agree with me. Rasgullas gives us the best taste bud experience. Probably I think no doubt about it. If I consider rasgulla 
is to be an experiential innovation or experience innovation. Preparation towards such an experience Preparation towards making Rasugulla is called design thinking, is as simple as that. And also you all need to understand, there is a transformational shift from the way we thought about innovation and the way we are thinking about innovation now. In the Esther years, innovation was more of an engineering driven, product driven and marketing driven. I, you look at these three aspects, every innovation which we actually delivered in the last two, three decades are more focused on either engineering side or the product side or a marketing side. However, in the last few years, I think there is a clear shift which we are observing now. The innovation's focus is more on a design driven or a customer driven or a user experience driven. So the engineering has actually transformed to a design product has been transformed to a customer and marketing is been transformed to user experience. This is what is the design thinking is helping. This is what is the platform which is bringing by design thinking to bring such an innovation. In a sense, how do we define, how do we connect both these terms? Design thinking is a communication of innovation. Design thinking is an art of innovation. Design thinking is a human-centered approach to an innovation. I think it's a fundamentally very clear communication, art and human-centered approach. Probably by this time, I'm sure you understand what exactly is the design thinking is all about. Now let us look at a few examples so that you can relate what exactly we are talking about, what exactly the terminology which we are discussing now. Before we take up some examples, now let us look at pictorially what are the minimum qualifiers for a experience innovation. Design thinking is the way. In the process, there should be people desirability. People should desire for that. And there should be business viability. And the third part is technical feasibility. This is what IDEO design thinking framework is talking about. If you look at these three circles, if the combination of a people and business exists, then it is called emotional innovation. For example, the brand's relationship and marketing are all come into that particular area. The combination of people and technology brings up the functional innovation, right? The combination of technology and business viability brings up the process innovation. If all three exist, if a process, ex process, if a process innovation exists, functional innovation exists and emotional innovation exists, then it is called experiential innovation. Design thinking ultimate goal is to bring experience innovation, experiential innovation. Right? Probably now you understand exactly the linkage between two. Now it is easy for us to take up some few examples so that you can relate the, to the concepts to the real life examples. I think we discussed a lot about the theory, fundas and so on. I'm sure I think I bored you a lot. Now let us look at a few stories. It gives you a little break. At the same time, it also brings us some kind of concepts, if you can derive from this. You all know that Vikasara, one of the demons, was seeking a disruptive innovation, right? So Vikasara was doing a very ardent sacrifice. He was doing a fire sacrifice. At a point, he was taking his own flesh and blood and pouring into this uh, fire sacrifice for a big benediction. The benediction is, may death come to whoever I touch upon the head with my hand, is what I think he was seeking for. After a lot of struggle and sincerity, finally he receives the benediction. However, there is a human touch missing in this benediction. He was trying to misuse this benediction. Finally, Lord has to come and inhalate him. In this disruptive innovation, the emotional part is completely missing out. Probably I think it would not be qualified as an experiential innovation. Now let us look at another technological innovation which we have seen in the Vedic times. Brahmasra is considered to be the one of the best technological innovation. If you look at the technical composition of this Brahmasra, the front part consists of highly inflammable substance. Just below you can see that four arrows are there and the four arrows also contain some kind of explosive material and they are creating the base. 
and the four arrows are also connected to a thread which is connecting the tip and uh, the base and finally highly explosive substance is actually filled in the back end part of it this is considered to be the most technological weaponry machine in the history itself if you look at the operational side and the functional side and the process side it is very cumbersome process it requires a lot of lot of practice it requires a lot of benedictions from the lord himself to operate and all that so it is not that easy and it is not giving that kind of full fledged uh, experiential innovation right now see a completely tangentially different example which is called moksha it consists of a complete experience it is an ultimate benediction many of us seek for right in the vedic history if you heard about uh, gajendra moksha gajendra was uh, trying to seek this kind of benediction finally lord brings that liberation and he brings that complete moksha marga maybe you might agree or may not agree or may not be matching to the terminology and the latest lingo and so on but i think it gives the complete ultimate experiential innovation right now see some of the contemporary examples so that you can actually connect it to whenever we hear about space age new starship and so on we get a goosebump at least i am experiencing i am sure you would also so this star this starship is designed uh, to fly into the moon mars and so on it could be considered as one of the best technological innovations in the recent times the japanese billionaire esako is going to be the first passenger and he has already booked his tickets if you look at this particular innovation and map to the three circles personally i feel it qualifies for the desirability everyone wants to go to the moon everyone wants to go for mars definitely space has identified the people's need or desirability however look at the business viability not every person can invest into it and book the tickets and see the technology side though the current product is looking at all aspects of technology and getting built for sure i'm sure there would be many other aspects which are kind of missed out unless we really travel to the space we would not be knowing some other technological elements it qualifies on the desirability side less on the business viability side and 50 50 on the technology side now let us look at another example of paddy field process and tea leaves plucking process let us look at the paddy field process during the paddy season right i think women or men who are employed they they have to dip their leg in a wet mud for a long period in a constant bending position and continuously seed this is the kind of process if you look at the tea workers they have to continuously pluck the leaves from the plants and throw it back in a day they maybe they might they have to do this for more than 200 300 times which actually brings a lot of problem on the spinal cord which actually puts a lot of pressure on the spinal cords in the paddy case feet attracts the fungus and so on which actually becomes a major food problem if you see from a mapping process side definitely it uh, qualifies for the business viability because many work for a cheap rates and also there is an employment issue so definitely i think a lot of people would actually get into this kind of business however from a people desirability perspective nobody would really final card and foot and so on it is only a matter of choice which they are actually kind of working on if you look at from a technology side technology is missing from a both aspects which which have which can potentially bring some kind of solution to this now let us look at another example red cross which is considered to be the one of the best humanitarian organization across the world red cross is bringing the community resilience and humanitarian aid in multiple countries wherever there is a need you should map this particular service to these coordinates definitely it is uh, qualifying on the business viability side because the service is available and affordable it also has a desirability because someone is seeking the service so there is a human desirability but again the technology piece is completely missing out in this example as well now look at another great example which is dr google more than a physical doctor this doctor is bringing lot of solutions to all our problems in the world 
Google search engine per se, if you look at as the solution or the innovation, it qualifies on the all parameters. The first one is it is bringing the business viability. Many of us could able to afford Google search. Most of the times it is free and for certain solutions or certain services with a limited cost. From a technology perspective, probably it is considered to be the one of the best innovation in the century itself. From a desirability perspective, everyone uses it. For a different purpose or for a different reasons, most of us are using Google search. If you look at Google search engine from the 1998 version to the current version, it has connected the pearls step by step and it has brought all the aspects over a period of time. Today, I think it can be reasonably considered as one of the best experience innovation. My dear students and friends, hope you all agree with me that design thinking is a special journey between the problem and solution. Hope you all now can relate, map or identify which one qualifies for what. If you think you are confident now with all aspects of this design thinking, I would like to give a small exercise, a little activity so that it becomes a food for thought before I come back with my next web session on design thinking. The first activity is you need to identify three innovations which qualifies on the human desirability side, business viability side and technical feasibility side. The second activity is you need to identify only two innovations which qualifies on the human desirability side business viability side but not on the technology side. The third activity is you need to identify two innovations which qualifies on the business viability side, technical feasibility side but not on the human desirability side. The last activity for this web session is you need to identify two innovations which qualifies on human desirability side, technical feasibility side but not on the business viability side. Thank you so much for patience listening. I'm sure this is a long session for you, but for sure, I think you might have enjoyed this session. Stay tuned. I'll be back with my next session where we will discuss about some of the best frameworks available in the market today, which are the companies are actually championing this particular design thinking and how they're actually kind of promoting or kind of progressing in design thinking. Stay tuned. I'll be back shortly. Thank you so much.